Welcome, welcome, ladies and gents and beings of the internet, to this here Let's Play with me, Penta Hybrid. This is Penta Plays Game Dev Tycoon. Been waiting for this one. I have been waiting for this one for quite the while. Mostly because my last Let's Play was quite difficult towards the end of it, and it was frustrating. So. This is going to be refreshing. For those of you that don't know what this game is, I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro on this game before we jump into it. This game is available on Steam right now for about $10. It is a fantastic game. Uh, I've had it for quite a while, actually, and I have several, 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 you know, probably dozen plus hours into this game. Uh, Greenheart Games, as you can see here, developed this game, and they took heavy influence, I won't say an homage, but they took a lot of influence from the game uh, Game Dev Story, which was for iOS and Android, for phones. One of my favorite games on the phone back when I played games on the phone before I realized they all sucked. That was a great game to play because, you know, you, you know, it was just, you know, basic. You know, you make games, you make money, and whatever. And this game took that formula, and what Greenheart did with it was fantastic. They took that formula and made it more open to modern gamers rather than just people who fiddle around on their phones. And that's not meant to be insulting at all, but uh but yeah, it's it does it does it make you feel like you're actually making games? Of course not, because the review process in the game is completely flawed. Uh but it does have a good feel to it. It's a very fun game. Pick it up now. Uh I hope you guys enjoy this with me. Because this is going to be fun. We are going to skip the tutorials, however. Or, no, I mean, we're, we're not going to skip the tutorials. I mean, uh, because I want people who haven't played the game before who might be watching this to understand what is actually going on. It's not hard to explain, but it's much easier to just go through this. Okay. Uh, welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. In this business simulation, you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 35 years, you can build your dream company, create best-selling games, gain fans, and become the leader of the market. Be yeah. Before you can start your adventure, you have to give your upcoming company a name. We're going to be... Bethesda? No. Pioware? No. <gasps> Pentaware. Pentaware. Nice. And of course, Dr. Sir. Dr. Durr. There we go. Dr. Sir. Alright. Where's our where's our brown hair? There's our brown hair. Sweater vest? Sweater vest. As you can see here. You can change the length of the game from 30 years for a fast-paced game, 35 years for the standard game, and 42 years for the long game. Uh, you can continue playing after the main game is over. The game length simply specifies how fast new platforms come out and when your high score is calculated. So if you were to choose 42 years, it would be probably an extra 3 years between the Gen 6 and Gen 7 t uh, consoles rather than the usual like 5 or 6. So... We're going to do the standard recommended 35, which is what I usually play, because it, it feels much more uh, mid-paced. You know, you have time to actually make the games on certain consoles rather than, you know, make one game and a new one's announced. So we're going to jump in. We're not going to keep my hints. We are not. We're going to play this fresh-faced, because I don't want people, like I said, I don't want people who might have never played this game before watching this to be like, oh, well, why don't you just do adventure because it's plus two, you know? No, it's gonna, we're gonna do a fresh face. Will I know a lot of it? Maybe. But it's a very random game because it's all formulaic. There's actually algorithms behind stuff in this, so... Uh, and I don't cheat. I, I, I accept if I get a four rating. Yeah, since you have played the game before, you can choose to use all previously gained hints in this new game. Would you like to import? No. Starting fresh. As you can see, we got Dr. Sir's Gaming Company, my my two previous things, and of course my Penta Plays. We're going to save over the Penta Plays one, because I'm nowhere in that one. That was just for my title screen. Yes. If you ever want to review the tutorial messages, 
then you can go to do so in the help menu. To access the help menu, either features and other features such as, ugh, such as saving, loading, and creating a game, simply press, simply press escape to access the main menu. My, my mouth is not working today. Or you can click this little button. Much easier because this is very mouse. It's, it's, everything in this game is mouse. So why would I come all the way over up to this escape button when I can just come down here and click this? Anyway, yes. Congratulations! You've just started your very own game development company. At the moment, your office is in a garage and you are the only employee, but don't worry. Many successful businesses have started out this way. Let's start developing your first game. Close this message and click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. So now, you can see up here, we have our zero fans. That's our fan counter. Year one, month one, week one, and then this little four dot counter is how much progress through that certain uh, month is. So like when this gets down to four, you'll see it go to week two. And so on. Our cash, $70,000. Research tech and bugs, design and technology, and then no project up here. Very basic interface. The research uh, you use later on to access new genre or new titles and... Uh, you know, types of game and topics of games. Technology, design, and bugs are all for development. So that's why they're kind of grayed out right now. Uh, we're going... Not there. Uh, develop new game. Alright. Before development can begin, you have to decide what kind of game you want to create and give your game a name. You can also select which graphic technology your game should use. Your options are initially limited, but once you have a bit of experience, you will be able to unlock new options. So see, we got our game name, the cost of the game, platform, genre, and topic. So we'll go into topic and brief uh, description before we jump into this, actually. The topics in this game is fantastic. As you can see, there are a bunch of them to be unlocked. And it's a dice roll. The ones you start out with are never the same. You, that is the, it's, I don't want to call it roguelike, because it's not roguelike at all, but there is a completely randomized pool of topics you can start out with at the beginning of each new game. So it adds that fresh replayability factor to it, because, like, right now, we got romance, vocabulary, vocabulary, mystery, and ninja. Vocabulary, I know personally, is a very good one to do. Ninja is, I've never really had a lot of success with romance and mystery, I've never dabbled in too much. So we're going to make a vocab, well, eh, we're going to make a mystery game. And then down as genre, we got our five genres. Action, adventure, RPG, simulation, and strategy. And we're going to do an um, adventure, mystery, adventure. And we've got two platforms here. We've got the Commodore 64, G64, or the PC. Now... Anybody who has a bre any basic history knowledge knows exactly what happened to the, C uh, the Commodore 64, but at this point in time, it is doing very well. It has a 56.1 market share. So yes, we're paying $15,000 more to make the game on it, but we'll get a lot more back. And it's a mystery adventure. Oh, balls. This interface is kind of weird sometimes. Like, you have to look for where that text selector comes up instead of the finger so we're gonna we're gonna name this game sir what for twenty five thousand dollars and we're gonna do 2d graphics volume one or mark one version one whatever you want to call it v1 and it's gonna cost us a total of thirty thousand dollars just to start the game and as you can see here game development runs through three stages at the beginning of each stage, you can decide what areas of the game you want to focus on. Picking the right focus for your game greatly increases the points you generate, which is very true. Think about what areas are important for your game and decrease the focus on areas you think are less important. If you want to read a brief description of the different play area, different areas, please refer to the help menu. Engine gameplay story quest. That's always development stage one. Sir What is a mystery adventure, so I'm going to say it, stories and quests is going to go up. Engine is going to go probably about a third, and gameplay can come up about two-thirds. These sliders actually really don't mean much. I'm just going to come out right and say it. Uh, the sliders don't mean a whole lot. It's this time allocation preview down here that means a lot. You can tell that Stories and Quest is going to get a lot of time into it, and Engine will get a, a bit of time. You can, you can take Engine all the way down, and it'll still get a little time. So the sliders are really just there for 
to move these bars down here around. So we're going to jump into development stage one and I'll click out. Game development has now started. While developing your game, you will generate game points, which you can see bubbling up. They're called bubbles. Game points are divided into design points and technology points. The more points you generate, the better the game will be. From time to time, there will also be bug points generated. These points become less likely once you gain experience. Bugs should be fixed before the game is released and increase development time and cost. Yes. You can see we're doing quite well. Got six and two on our first stage, which is actually very good for our first game, I might say. That's actually very good. Adventure dialogues max. Level design about here and AI about here, I'm going to say. The dialogues in, a, in an adventure game is just phenomenal, I would say. I've never delved, like I said, I never really did much in mystery, but this is, it's a game of trial and error. It's, it's very much trial and error. Why are you all awkward, Mike? What are you all awkward for? Anyway. Alright. Can we get 10 and 10? That's all I want. 10 and 10. We got mm, 10 and 3, 10 and 4. Alright, we got 10 design. Wow. During development, you can also select additional features for your game. Right now, you can only pick basic sounds, but your options will increase quickly. Selecting additional features makes the game generally better, but also increases its cost. You will also see the graphic type you selected when you defined the game. This is just to remind you of your choice. You cannot change the types of graphics mid-game. Like here, it'll say 2D graphics for V1. You can't change it, ever. But basic sounds you'll get. Eventually you'll get a lot of features over here. So sound, world design adventure is going to be about here. Graphic is going to be about here. And sound is going to be about here. Because then they're about even. But world design gets a little bit more time. We can turn to cho choose to turn off the sounds. Uh, I've heard that that actually makes your first game a lot more successful. But I've not been ballsy enough to risk it. So we're just going to go right into it. Did we make the right choice? Are we going to get 8? We got 8. 14 and 8 and 4 bugs. 16 research though. I'll show you what research does in a little while. The development of your first game is now complete. You can press the finish button to publish your game, but you should do that once you fix the majority of bugs. Releasing a game without fixing bugs can severely affect your rating, so you should only ever consider that if you need the cash and can't afford to wait. Now we'll wait for our bugs. He'll do about a bug every second. And finish. Sir, what is now complete? The development of your game is now finished. Ooh, excuse me, hiccups. Ugh. While developing games, you gain experience and improve your skills. When development is completed, you will be presented with a summary of experience gained. So you can see here we got a lot of experience. I'm going to be honest, a lot of these... They're actually very important, but early on, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. The big one that makes means a lot to you is your basic, uh, the ones that you've you you use a lot, and then your level. And as you can see, we got a bonus of one times 1.5 because we have a new topic and a new combo. Uh, you can always throw away your game if you choose to. For some reason, they let you do that. Uh, and then, sir, what you can change the title, but we're not going to release the game. Your game is now complete and will be handed off to publishing. We should su we should see reviews and sales coming in for the game soon. The reviews for the game always come at the start of the next week. Uh, later on, that actually plays an important role because it lets you do a few things before the reviews come in. There, that way you don't have to do them while the reviews are doing. Uh, so like you could click here and click around here while that review is not being done. Like I can actually have him research something before the reviews come in, so then it it just it's it's a lot more time con uh, time uh, saving. Research is important to unlock new options and make better games. You should try to save enough research points to be able to create your own game engine. This will greatly improve your games. Hint: Try to develop games with different topics and con genre combinations to slightly for a slight research boost. Uh, you could do a new engine. Which we won't do at the moment because there's not a lot that we have unlocked. But we could do a new topic. They always have four unlocked. And every time you do a new one, another one is the next one is unlocked. So it doesn't matter if we choose business, hacking, surgery, or sci-fi. This one will be unlocked next. Uh, we're going to go hacking first. 
hacking and sci-fi are the real big ones there for me. For me, as personal of playing this game before. Those are my big ones. Uh, I'm going to try a lot of new ones out during this Let's Play because I have not... Uh, I could honestly say during a lot of my playthroughs of this game, I generally stick to some of the same ones because I know they're successful, but I'm going to stretch out a little bit more on this one, be a little more flexible. Uh, the first reviews came in for our new re newly released game, Sir What? Alright, let's see what we got. A six, a five, ooh, has its moments, Star Games, seven. Beautiful, there we go, Inform Gamer, good job, Game Inform, or Inform Gamer, sorry. Six, I like it, Game Hero. And a seven, nice experience. Alright, so that's a 6.75, I believe. Total score, that's not... After publishing a game, you can invest a little bit of time to analyze your creation and generate a game report. Game reports are a great way to gain research points as well as valuable insights into what works and what doesn't work when developing a game. That's what I was talking about uh, before you get your review in. You can always start your report. That way you won't have to worry about it until after the... That way you won't have to stress about it after the review. You can just click on it and have them do it. Before the review goes in, I always choose to do that. To generate a game report, close this message and click anywhere, yes. And you can click... Uh, Pentaware, a newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Sir What? The game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, Pentaware is sure to gain fans quickly. Oh, hey, hey, damn, I can't do it. He's already busy doing something. Ooh, look at that. 3.6 thousand sold in a first week. Sir What sold 3 3,581 units in the first week on market. We made it into the charts at number 73. Now that your game is on sale, you receive the income from the game every week, as you can see here. It tells you how much our monthly cost is at the end of every month. 8,000 for the garage. Uh, that will grow significantly as you move up. $25.1 thousand dollars for sales this week and 19 fans, as you can see up here. So that's, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> Sir What was so successful we have now nine we now have nineteen fans. Woohoo! Alright, boom boom. You have successfully researched hacking. Alright, see now it says generate game report. And we can have him do a game report on Sir What, which is six point two five. I was a little off on my math. Apologize. Sir What has achieved a company sales record with over ten thousand units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Pentaware. Yes it is. We are on the road to Jesus. Nice research there. All right, here's the game report. All right, our post-release analysis of Sir What is complete and got the following results. Mystery and adventure is a great combination. That's good to know. Uh, graphics seems to be quite important for this type of game. Okay, so it was important. We were we were about halfway on the slider, so uh, that would have gotten us up maybe about one or two more design bubbles. All right. Game reports are a great way to gain more research points and new insights. It pays off to generate a report for each game you release. Now that you've completed your first game report, it's a good idea to look at the research menu. To open the research menu, close this message and click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. And you can go and research, which we already did. There, see, we, we jumped ahead of the curve uh, in the tutorial. I, that's kind of what I do every time, but uh, research is so important that it's okay to skip to it. In the tutorial and see now we unlock government we're gonna unlock sci-fi next and once this is done we're gonna be doing a hacking simulator because it's very good idea especially if you know what you're doing early on to do games you think are gonna be successful or know are gonna be successful and uh, kind of words to words words from the wise about this game uh, the first time you get offered to move up, per se, uh, is about $1 million in, uh, in income and cash. They will ask you to move up. I would strongly suggest to say no to that until you have about 5 to $10 million. I usually don't move up until I have about $15 million because you will sp be spending money out of the ass once you move up. It's only costing you $8,000 a month to stay in the garage, which is stupid because it's a garage. But uh, if you can manage to make about $20,000 a week on your games, you, you, it's, it's, f it's flawless. I, one of my games, I ended up staying in the garage until about year 30. That's right. And I never went bankrupt. 
Uh, granted, you know, it, it, you don't make as successful of games because you don't have a lot of the access or the assets that you would when you move up. But anyway, yeah, that's just my suggestion. You can choose to uh, listen to that or not. Uh, it's just a suggestion from somebody who has 15 plus hours into the game. We're going to make a hacking simulator because those are very good. And we're going to go on the Commodore 64 again. Ah, oh, damn it. That, that's frustrating. That is one of the things that's actually frustrating is that, you know, that interface can be very frustrating. All right, we're going to call it Sir Hacker. Yep. It's going to be 2D graphics. Let's check out real quick on our Sir What. This is our game history menu. You can go here every time. It's very lackluster. I'll admit it's very lackluster on the details, but if it was any more detailed, the game would probably be more of a headache than just casual than it is. Uh, so you can see Sir What is a mystery adventure for the G64. It had a 6.25 aggregate score. It's so far sold 6.2 thousand. You can see here it is actually 6.8 thousand, but that's okay. Uh, it cost us 46,000 to make it, and so far we've had a profit of 67.5 thousand. So it it really does show you what you need to know. It tells you like it's a the game history is a great way to go back and check what games you want to remake or retry or later on in the game. I'm spoiler alert make a sequel for uh, we'll get into that once we get there but yep and it gave us you know 84 fans so you know we're gonna get get right here on sir hacker sir hacker is going to be maxed out on engine and gameplay and no stories and quests absolutely no story in a, a simulator for hacking and you'll see those tech bubbles just start shooting out yep four and four Nice. AI is going to be up there. Dialogues will be down. Level design is going to be up there. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at those bubbles. Look at those bubbles. This is... It's such a good sound, too. Sir, what is now off the market? It sold 18,201 units, generating $127,443 in sales. So we made quite a bit of pro uh, profit on there. World Design's down, sound and graphics. Actually, sound is going to take a little bit of a dive in terms of graphics. And Dev Stage 3. Let's see here. Can we get 10 in both? 10 in both. There we go. There we go. Get those bugs out of there. Sometimes you'll see an extra bubble pop up. Nope. Uh, industry news. Recent market studies suggest that the Govador 64 is steadily outselling competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over the home computers. Alright. Experts say this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. <coughs> nope. Okay. Before he can get another bug in there, 13 and 13. Alright. New record! Bonus, new combo, new, or new combo, new topic, and not going to level anything up here. We'll release the game and quickly click on our dude. Ah, quickly click on our dude. No! Quickly click on our dude. There it is. Generate game before. See, I got it right at the beginning of the week before the reviews could come in. And now he'll start the game report and the reviews will come in and I won't have to worry about clicking on him afterwards. The first reviews for our newly released game, Sir Hacker, came in. Is it eight? Hacking and simulation is a great combination. Star Games. Oh, nine. Oh, eight. Okay. Very good. Informed Gamer. We get a nine. Another eight. Oh, very enjoyable. Game Hero. You better not give me a seven, dude. All right. Played it for days. All games. We got an 8.00 aggregate score on that game. That is a very good second game. We're going to sell 5,000 in the first week. All right. Good stuff. Our post-release analysis of Sir Hacker is complete, and we got the following results. Hacking and simulation is a great combination. Graphics seem very important for this type of game. They throw those words out there for you. Like, there are five different stages of combinations. There's bad, or there's terrible, there's bad, there's okay, there's good, and there's great. So you can see great combination, that's the best you can do. And then graphics seem to be very important. They'll say very, or they'll say important, or they'll say not important. 
for those three levels. And then platform genre match, G64 and simulation is good. So it's okay. It's a lot better on the PC, but because the G64 at this point in the game has a better market share, we're sticking. We're going to stick with that. We'll sell 10,000 in the second week. All right. I'm going to do a little research real quick, see what our next fantasy. Oh, we're getting, of course we're getting fantasy. Gee. We're going to make a fantasy action game. No, I'm just kidding. Make a fantasy RPG, of course. According to rumors, the Japanese company Ninvento is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Ninvento is known for the widely successful arcade game Dinky King. Many industry experts doubt that the home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager to see what Ninvento will deliver. Alright. You have successfully researched fantasy, and we're going to jump right in and see what our next one is, because we have 14 research points. Vampire... Ooh, no. We're going to save up. We're going to save up for that next engine. Ah, yeah, what the hell. We're going to... You know what? Eh. We'll make Surgery Simulator 2014. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Successfully researched surgery. Okay. Well, we're going to end this first part here. This is we've got two games out already. We're at 195.2 thousand. We got 216 fans almost at the end of year 1. This has been this has been Game Dev Tycoon. I suggest you buy it. It's a ridiculously addicting game. It might not look like much, but it's once you get that first hit, that first 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, or four tens or whatever it is. I might have said five. Once you get that first 10 across the board, you're sold. You will not stop playing the game. Trust me. Oh. But yeah, this is this is... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Do all your things, like, favorite, subscribe, share, blah, 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 blah. Catch me over on my social media. And until next time on Game Dev Tycoon with me, Penta Hybrid, I will catch you later.